Fred, thank you very much. I've got to get new business cards, I guess. Uh, uh, but thank you all for being here. Uh, CFED does great work. It opens up opportunities for millions of Americans by helping them start and grow businesses, go to college, save, and really create a financial future. And of course, I'm here accepting this award on behalf of the 100,000 city people in the U.S. and 260,000 around the world. Over the last couple of years that I've been plumber in chief, <laughs> I've had the opportunity to visit a number of them, a number of our community offices and our branches and our businesses, and I've got to tell you, not only are these people great bankers, but they're great community bankers. They take great pride in devoting money and time and many other resources to make the communities they live in better. I thought what I'd do is share with you a couple of thoughts on financial inclusion and the, responsibility, the responsibilities that banks have. And I'll just take a couple of minutes. But as President Obama has said, ultimately there is no dividing line between Main Street and Wall Street, we will rise or we will fall together as one nation. So we all know that banks are an integral part of every economy and every society, and their role is not merely to further people's material well-being, although that is vitally important, the value of banks runs much deeper than that. Human rights and democracy reach their full potential only where there is economic inclusion for all. And that in turn requires financial inclusion, access to basic financial products and services that everyone in this room and people in every advanced society take for granted. So financial inclusion, that is our true cause. At City, we approach this in a certain way. Responsible finance is the underlying idea upon which we have rebuilt and reorganized our bank in the wake of the financial crisis. And that has three key pillars. The first is responsibility to our customers. The second is responsibility to the financial system. And third, is responsibility to the broader community. So before we enter into any transaction, we ask ourselves three questions. Is it in the best interest of our customer? Is it systemically responsible? And does this create economic value? And the answer to all of those three questions must be yes. So from innovative foreclosure prevention programs, that have kept nearly one million Americans in their homes to a new disciplined approach to risk management, responsible finance is being ingrained throughout cities' practices and culture. And we know responsible finance is partly about the bottom line. No one wants to see another crisis. Also, our shareholders expect and have every right to expect the company to be profitable and well-managed but it's also about our responsibilities to the communities we serve. And we know something about finance. We know something about plumbing. We know something about scaling. It's a natural fit for us to put our money, talent, and experience and products to work in communities where access to financial services is limited and to strive to include more people in the financial system. Let me share with you a couple of examples. First, the Communities at Work Fund. Everyone knows that lower income neighborhoods and small businesses are often the ones hardest hit during a recession. Financial institutions such as Citi can play an important role in catalyzing economic opportunity. We issue credit through traditional loans from our branches. We support worthy and effective community-based organization. But we wanted to do much more to extend our reach into the most underserved communities and neighborhoods to provide capital for businesses, 
charter schools, and other community organizations. Our first step was to call upon cities experts in microfinance and community finance who identified two leading nonprofit partners, Calvert Foundation and Opportunity Finance Network. We then worked together as a team to develop the fund. And at 200 million, it's one of the largest vehicles for connecting private capital with underserved communities. We leveraged cities' financing capital and expertise to create a sustainable and ultimately profitable social enterprise. So this is one of our more recent efforts, but there are many, many more. For example, City and Grameen America, and we just announced this a couple of days ago, we developed a savings program that provides 2,500 entrepreneurs with access, and some for the first time, to easy-to-use accounts. College education is another example. It's no secret that a college degree is key to lifetime success. But the rising cost of private and public education is making it necessary and increasingly difficult for our youth, especially those from low and middle class income backgrounds, to afford the education that they deserve. In fact, less than 10% of students from low income families graduate from college by their mid-20s. To address this issue, this year we committed $7.5 million to a joint effort with CFED, the United Negro College Fund, and Knowledge is Power Program Network of Charter Schools. Together, we are working to provide a package of financial products and services tailored to the specific needs of low-income households. Our goal is to help families overcome the financial barriers that keep so many talented youth from fulfilling their potential. We're also trying to build the underserved, bring to the underserved, and into the, we're trying to bring the underserved into the financial mainstream and improve financial education in low-income communities. It's impossible to overstate the importance of financial education in, in many, many ways, how people manage their money is much more important than how much they have. One contributing factor to the financial crisis was that too many people didn't understand how best to secure their financial futures. That's a skill that can be learned, and it is vital no matter how big or small your bank balance. In the wake of the crisis, the financial services industry has re-evaluated the way we do business and the values that drive us. Indeed, the crisis illustrated the need for banks to focus on their essential role in society, to help customers save, invest, spend, borrow, and protect their money with trust and confidence, and, help to, and to help enterprises by committing capital. In short, the banks have learned, again, how to be banks. At City, creating financial opportunity for everyone is at the core of our mission. We are committed to putting the full force of our people and the resources to work to drive financial inclusion. Achieving that mission means incorporating it in everything we do and into every relationship we build. Our relationship with CFED is one of our most important, and I want to thank your leadership and all those of you who support this. Finally, I want to thank all of you here again in the room for the work we do and the work you do together will help provide more Americans than ever with the financial tools they need to create a better future for themselves, their families, and their communities. So again, we at City are extremely honored to receive this award and we will not let you down with the plumbing. <laughs> I thank you again.